DMG. Street, Street life. Look. With these low rap niggas, I just play with them. Something like fishing on the track, I keep beating them. Caught up on the hook, now filleting them. Easy get to slaying them. Body found, now pray for them. Usually in the VI, listening to BI. I don't care if you box, I'm not like TI. CI, New York Giant, I'm like. Welcome back to Faded Truth. Today, I got another cast member of the new upcoming movie, Bully, The Dead Don't Die, premiering in 2020. And today, I have Raymond Cabrera on the show, also known as Sosa. Hello, How are you feeling today? I'm good in yourself. I'm doing good. Do you remember this scene? It's loyalty. It's loyalty. I need somebody who I can trust. I need somebody I can expand with, try to take over the whole East Coast. That's what I'm here for, bro. Like, just give me the word. The word? Where were you yesterday, Rico? We had a meeting. You ain't show up. You stood me up. I mean, I got caught up in some shit. Did you? When it comes to business, when it comes to my money, there is no party. Soul loves the party. Right, fellas? Yeah! yeah. Love party the soul sway. This is your first acting debut, correct? Yes, ma'am, it is. Okay, so congratulations. Thank you. How did you even get into the role? Alex was speaking to everyone that was already on the cast who started and said he, he knew of someone who would be perfect for the role of Sosa, who is the biggest cartel drug dealer of the East Coast. Okay. So um, when he sent me the script, I started reading it and I'm like, oh, wow. It, it kind of like suited me well. Not that I am, but I, I kind of like, I felt- I was gonna say, I, does it relate to like things in the past? You're like, I no, can get no, down not, with this character. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all, but you know what? Growing up, watching, I didn't live in a uh, in a great neighborhood. I started reading the the script, and it kind of like I fell right into into place. So it was kind of easy role for you to take as your first role. Correct. When I grew up, it, it was all drugs where I lived at around the right. corner. Where did you grow up in New York or in New York in the Bronx? Okay. Yeah. So you know, uh, you know, you will come inside the building, and there's drugs being sold in the building. You mm -hmm. walk out. So kind of like when you're reading the script and you make yourself that person who you've seen in the past as a child growing up. That's crazy, though, that you yeah. can put yourself in that role and think like, wow, I would never think growing up seeing these people, I would be like portraying one of them, right? One of them, correct. <laughs> correct. So that's why when I read it, I'm like, oh, it, I can I can relate to this. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is the biggest difference between your character, Sosa, and you in real life, other than you're not a kingpin that I know of? <laughs> well, I, I, I'm, I'm a bar owner. I'm opening up my first bar in the Bronx on Tremont Avenue in Randu called Barrio BX. Okay. Um, Alex hit you up and was like, hey, you want to do this? You're like, yeah, I could try acting. Or were you like attempting to try and get into acting? I looked at it as I have nothing to lose. It's something new. It keeps me busy. You know, you get to meet great people, different people, network. And and pretty much when I started doing it, that's more of what it was. Meeting people. Hey, listen, by the way, I own a bar, which one of the scenes where I get killed is done at my bar. Oh, shit. Right. So I get killed at my very own bar before we even open it up. So, Damn. Yeah, I know. Like, dude, I, I, like I told him, like, at least let me open up and make some money at my bar before you kill me. In my own right. bar. I went to Alfred e. Smith High School and I did Oliver Twist. And one of the roles was I was Sykes, which was boyfriend of the girl who she protected Oliver Twist from this guy, Sykes. He was a big, bad guy. He used to have these little kids stealing while robbing wallets. Mm. You know, Oliver Twist I was remember a boy. that play. Truth be told, he was a rich kid who finally found his family. So you're like, fuck it. I'm just going to try it, see what happens. Like... Listen, got nothing to lose. <laughs> you know, the crazy thing is that day, that scene that you showed, it was amazing because I've worked with the Mexicans. The, the Sosa role, I worked with the cartels, the Mexican cartels, and I'm actually surrounded by Mexicans with their bikes, low riders. I'm like, yo, this is hot. So what cartel are you in charge of in the movie? The East Coast. East Coast cartel? I have everything down, right. Okay. Uh, that's a broad Coast. range. <laughs> well, it, it goes down from like New York all the way to Miami. And who are you interacting with most in the movie? Rob Solis, who is one of the heads of the Italian mafia. These guys wanted to kill me because when I tell you <laughs> I disrespected and 
these guys, their faces changed, and I'm looking at them, and I'm like, oh, man, I think I fucked up. I'm talking about I disrespected their race completely. And when we had cut at one point, <laughs> one of the guys comes out, and he's like, yo, listen, you got to do me a favor. You got to cut it out because you're disrespecting. I'm like, damn, I'm going to get out of this one, you know? And finally, I was like, yo, listen, we're acting. And if you're getting frustrated by it, imagine the viewers. That was your role. And they got mad after off camera because you did your job. I, I mean, listen, I was calling them Guidos, yo, meatballs, <laughs> yo. Meatballs. I'm like, you, you fucking guys, you know, you kiss each other. I fucking don't. I murder niggas. <laughs> and this guy's like, they want to take me out through the back door, man, <laughs> and put me in a trunk. I'm like, guys, man, forget about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 now all these guys they standing around me and I'm like fuck man like what am I gonna do right now these guys are about to kill me and I'm acting <laughs> guys don't take a serious time out like, yeah, like, stop this shit at the end they started laughing because they're like Yo, you know what you're right if, this, if, if I'm getting upset imagine a viewers who's watching the scene a lot of guys that were there um, watching and, and, and helping out with the with the production they were coming to me they were like yo, you know i think alex picked the right person for this scene because you know, you're hitting every point just like a, a, a cartel you know? yeah and you have to like act with emotion i feel like so if you're not connecting with the audience then you're not doing your job as an actor correct so what do you think is the hardest thing to learn about acting now that it's like your first time on camera basically what was the hardest thing for you to adapt to i'm going to say the hardest thing is working 16 hours and try to learn the script. Did you have anything that you kind of practiced before you went on camera? Oh, I practice on myself, right on the mirror. Okay, so that's how you do it? Like a self yeah. check right. kind of thing? Okay. I'm standing in front of the mirror and as I'm, I'm talking to myself, but I'm, that's how I'm reviewing it. So do you practice with like people in your house? Like, are you like, <laughs> No, I, 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 can't, I, I can't because you know what? With them, they'll start laughing. So, <laughs> okay. you know, once I start disciplining, then they're going to start laughing. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, you're acting again. So you're the kingpin. So through that out the movie, what's the dynamic? Are you, are people coming to you all the time trying to fuck with you? Like, are you just Not at all. Actually, everyone, fe everyone fears me. No one really gets close to me. I have a, a cousin who's like my right-hand man, and I have a, also a female who will never leave my side. So whatever it is that has to get done, I always send someone out to do it for me because if i get involved it, it's just to execute i'm, I'm not here right. to talk to anyone i don't want to <laughs> no I'm, I'm going in to fuck it you know what you couldn't do the job i got it you so, know, so what's how, why did you die maybe i didn't die you may think i died <laughs> the dead don't die <laughs> listen the dead don't die <laughs> the reason why i die is because i trusted rico when i came in rico was rico like you know uh, just like everyone else, but I took a liking to him where I brought him into my family. I brought him into my home. I wanted to show him how I became so powerful, not knowing that he was an undercover cop, but then he turned dirty. I brought him in so hard that he became me. I'm focusing more on the bar now, working for myself. You know, I, I'm, I'm tired of working for others. Yeah, amen. So what did you do in the Board of Education? I was doing security. Oh, okay. I've done security my whole, pretty much my whole life. I did security in nightclubs. I worked at, my first gig was at Jimmy's Bronx Cafe. And then from there, I started working at Club Cheetah. Then I did Le Poulet, Ohms, Cobra Cabana. What's the craziest um, thing you saw in security over the last 20 years that you've been in it? You know what? I'm going to say times have changed from when I started in 98 till, till now. No one goes out anymore to have a good time. You know what I'm saying? People, I mean, you've had your your, your, your issues, but once you, you break it up, everybody goes home, that's it. Now it's like, which is one of the reasons why I quit doing security, uh, because now everybody just wants to go outside and get a gun and either stab you or shoot you. You know, there's no more fair one where you can fight and then everybody wants to call the cops after 
you get your ass whipped. You know? I don't get it. Cause I'm like, why even go out if you want to be miserable and like have negative ass energy and want to like start shit with people. Cause at that point, like you just ruining everybody's night. Everybody's night. Yeah. So uh, even the establishment, because you know what, even if the establishment has something positive, like my thing is I cater to women. My bar is more of women. Women now are very powerful. They're very successful and they don't, there's no limit to their, their spending. Okay. Women like to go out, have a nice cocktail and look sexy, cl classy and sexy. So that's my, that's what I'm pushing for, you know, classy and sexy for women. And wherever so there's women. Eight or two, are you doing a lot of like martinis? Is it like craft cocktails or yeah, what is it? Signature drinks okay. just for women. Um, the foods, I'm not doing sit down. It's more of uh, finger foods. But very sexy, you you know, grab a little napkin, you that where you can chew and speak and still look beautiful, you know, and not messy, you know, and not going in there. No way, you get, and, you get uh, in a sweeter time. Not grabbing a drum leg and start eating. <laughs> you know, now you that would be me. Like, I'm still hungry. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, you're sitting there, I'm starving. You grabbing a, a a mango rib and now you got sauce all over your mouth. No. Your lipstick won't get messed up. You won't have no stains around your face and your clothes won't be stained up. But you can still have a conversation while you're taking your small bites with a classy drink. So I think you're on the concept of if women are there, men will follow. Is that correct? Okay. Correct. I listened, so and, I took, and I took that from LL Cool J. And let me tell you something. When, when he used to rap, he said, you know what? I'm going to start singing to the ladies. You know, and the man became successful. He sings to the ladies. Ladies, listen, they adore him. They love him. They spend that money for him. All he has to do is his lip uh, lick. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I need love. <laughs> you had a rough day at work. You know, something happened in your personal life. You just want to go out and even if you want to talk about it with somebody, have a, a and, and get it out your system. You want to be able to just do that, relax, go home, such a next day. Forget about yesterday. Yes, it was yesterday. Today's a new day moving forward. How'd you get the idea to do that? Was it because you were so like done with men from fucking breaking up fights forever that you were like, um, I'm looking at more how women are growing successfully okay. more than men. I'm looking at men now and it's like they're really not doing nothing for themselves. <laughs> they, they're, they're relying on women. Damn. You know, it's for me. It's for networking. Everyone needs has to know someone to get somewhere, and sometimes you need you might meet that person that can push you to get to where you need. And you haven't met that person to say, you know what, I'm gonna get you on your feet. You need sometimes women can build the man, believe it or not, like a man can build the woman. That's definitely for sure. You know, we just haven't met the right person to build us to where we need to be. Where's the bar located? It's gonna be in the Bronx or? Yes, it's called Barrio BX, uh, okay. 3764 East Tremont Avenue. If anyone that has eaten at Havana's Cafe, those are my partners uh, that are also involved with me in this project. Um, and we open up on Thursday for our doors for the first day. Oh and, shit, congrats. Yeah. If you do own a bar lounge, a restaurant, step up your game within the kitchen, with, at the bar, get your clientele. I feel like times are, uh, I don't know if they're ever going to be the same, but I feel like a lot of good changes have come for this year, just for me personally, but a lot of people around me too. Like, I feel like people are finding what they want to do, you know, like accomplishing new things, just like finding a different hustle or, you know, figuring out what the fuck they got to work on as a person. Yeah. And, and so that's the, the, the positivity I'm trying to bring from from the whole shutdown. Who's your favorite actor? I'm gonna say Rico. Alex Hugo did an excellent job playing Rico. I'm looking at him, I'm like, damn, this guy, how did he play that role so well as a cop? You know, when he's never even been a cop, how did you fall into character so well? You know, and him and I, it was like the perfect match. And maybe because we know each other for so long, that we can feed off of each other in the roles that we play. My next best act actress was my wife, who I was able to lay down for the first time, you know, in bed with my wife that I never had. <laughs> Who's your wife? <laughs> <laughs>
Your fake wife? <laughs> yeah, my fake wife, right. Okay, who's so, your fake wife? So she was in it. She was more of just there, like somebody who I could talk to, like my best friend. You build these relationships with people, you know, because you, you have to be like somehow emotionally connected to, to act with them, I feel, especially with like romantic scenes and things like that. Yeah. Who's your favorite um, actor in like that you want to watch in like real life? I love Denzel Washington. He can play many roles. He plays them all very well. Now you have actors that only play law enforcement and they, they play law enforcement roles perfect. You have some actors that will play like mobsters. They every role you see them in is right. just a mobster role. If it suits them, Denzel, on the other hand, can he can do anything, you know? And the it, movie where he was like a kingpin. Oh, American Gangster. Yeah, yeah, that was like my American favorite movie. Gangster. Yes, I like that role like on him the best. I think. Yes, and and you know it's funny. That I've I've watched that movie so many times, of how aggressive he was, how serious he was about his money. That was so. so he was playing some Denzel in there when he was acting. <laughs> Denzel and, and you know what, and a little bit of The Rock. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I love The Rock. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, the rock who doesn't different. love The Rock? He's yeah. He's all, all diverse too. I always love Jim Carrey because I'm like, this motherfucker's crazy. Like he's legit out there to be playing all these different roles. Correct, correct. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy was good, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, The Rock, he's one of my other favorites. And believe it or not, Mark, uh, Mark Wahlberg. Love him. Do you have oh. any um, upcoming uh, movies that you're actually gonna be working in from this point? Like, have you gotten more opportunities? Do you want to do any more or are you kind of like chilling? No, I listen, if, if opportunity knocks on my door, I'm going to take it. You understand? I think this was for me, like, uh, Alex, what he did was he opened up the doors for many who want to pursue a career in acting. You know, hopefully, you know, the viewers love what they see. Um, uh, they connect to the story and you never know. Someone might knock on my door and say, "Hey, we have a role that fits you perfect," and I'll, I'll quit what I'm doing and go straight into acting. <laughs> I can I, see you yeah. doing a funny role too. I, hey, I could be the next Rock or Denzel. <laughs> 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 what's your best advice, just to not even actors, but just for life? Like, what's your motto? Believe in yourself. You know what I mean? Don't never believe that you can't do something. You can do anything you want. You just have to apply yourself, put your mind into it, and never sell yourself short. You always going to struggle, but don't let the struggle stop you. Keep on going. You know, listen, I never knew I was going to own a bar. You understand? And look, here I am. I work for myself now, you know, and I treat my staff like they own the bar. I make this theirs. If you love what you do, you're going to, you're always going to give 110%. Right. And you're gonna be it's hard to get it's hard to keep it going if you hate the what you're doing, you know? Right, right. And you, you yeah. can read it on people. <laughs> Try to phase out what you're doing, but you're already phasing yourself into something else. Don't stop, don't quit until you already have your next plan set, uh where you can transition and say, Thank you, I'm leaving and you and you're starting a new chapter in your life. Our life is a story. I know. I want to write a book before I forget, like, the first half of it. <laughs> and, and you know what? I, I told someone that I've known for 27 years, she has gone through so much in her life. I told her, if you put your mind into a pen and paper and you put everything into a book, there are many women, many girls who have gone through the same path you have. They, they've lived the same life. You know, they struggled in life. You know, and although in the beginning you didn't have the love that you was seeking through your parents, your family, and you found it in a man who took advantage of that love that that you were seeking, you kind of like separated yourself, went to school, and prepared yourself to get to where you're at. Now, put it on paper. You know, I think it's good therapy for her as well. You know, like yeah. I feel like doing. 
she has so yeah, much- like doing the podcast, doing a lot of different interviews and just, I've been getting so many opportunities with people that I would never even expect. It's like crazy to see everybody's stories of where they started from, where they're at now. And I was just talking about life and how your childhood and everything affects your future relationships, mm-hmm. especially as a female. And people don't really see like why you're hard or why you're, you don't take shit or why you, you know what I mean? And it's because of how you were raised. So now I'm 30 and I'm finally being conscious of what I need to work on in my life, what I want, what I don't want to hold me back. So even doing this podcast was kind of like therapy. I think writing a book would even be better because you're actually talking about exact everything that happened, you know? Right. You're you not put holding your feelings into a piece of paper that everyone can relate to. Yeah. You know, not everyone had a, a, a great childhood. Even when I had my, my son, I used to come home from work and I had crackheads lined up going into my building. Every time the first came in, the first of the month, they were lined up. I was coming home from work, from the bars. You know, hookers coming in from the Bronx market, coming home. They finished their, their shift, you know what I mean? Not yeah, all. it's like crazy to see, like, even like you said, you never thought you'd own a bar right. and now you're a fucking bar owner. But like when you're in those situations and living like that, you can't see mm-hmm. doing those things because you're like, how the fuck am I going to get out of this? We all have choices. No one here can say everyone had a peachy life and lived great in a childhood. Everybody struggled. It's a choice you make after. You can stay selling drugs or you can say, you know what? Let me take whatever I made from selling drugs and invest it into real estate or right. and get out of this because nothing lasts forever. Either either you're going to get caught or you're going to be killed because somebody wants what you're getting, what you have. Go get yours. Keep the negativity away from you. I, and I realized that, you know, I started hanging out with a lot of positive people. I, I started hanging out with people who always told me, Yo, why don't you do this? But because of negative people that I had behind me, you don't listen to what he got to say. Yo, that's yeah. just stupid. It's what you want. As long as you do right by yourself, then nobody else can be mad at you because you only answer into yourself. So, exactly. So, are the guns that you shoot in the movie real? No, no one is shooting anything. When they're editing, there they somehow <clears throat> put the rounds shooting from the fire from the guns and what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, it's all yeah. edited. All right, so so well, thank you for being on the show. We'll look for you in the upcoming movie, Bully: The Dead Don't Die. Until next time, guys. Thanks for being here. When the cops come, running the track, you'll catch a hot one. Pop that kickback, boom like a shotgun.